Our next induction this evening in the builders category is one that prompts great reflection, some pain, careful examination, and in the end results in a feeling of pure joy and triumph, a reaction we think this incredible posthumous inductee would have savored. Here to share Herb Carnegie's exemplary story, one of the first women to be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame, Angela James. Good evening. Being asked to be here as part of Herb Carnegie's induction tonight is a tremendous honor. As his inspires, inspiring legacy has impacted so many lives, including my own. I first began to understand Herb Carnegie's legacy was when I was growing up in North Toronto with the dreams like all Canadian kids. We often played at Centennial Arena and one day we showed up to find the name had been changed to the Herb Carnegie Arena. And curiosity led me to discover that he was this amazing hockey player who held, who had ex excelled and at every level except the NHL. The words the best player to have never played in the NHL always struck me. As my own journey in, in hockey developed, so did my interest in this pioneer who trailblazed for young black players with achievements like this. Being a junior A phenom in the late 1930s with the Toronto Young Rangers, being passed over by the Toronto Maple Leafs, then going on to begin a legendary career in senior men's hockey, where from the 1940s to the 1942s, he led his team in Timmins, Ontario to a championship while centering the, the, fa the fabled Black Aces line with his brother Ozzy and their friend Manny McIntyre, unheard of at that time. In 1944, this formidable trio was hired to play for the Shawanigan Cataracts, then moved on to the Sherbrooke Randy Z's Saints, where in the years to follow, Herb Carnegie's dominance grew. He was named MVP of the Quebec Senior Hockey League in three consecutive seasons from 1947 through to 1949. In 1948, he was invited to the New York Rangers training camp, and although distinguishing himself as one of the best players, was only offered a spot on the team's AHL affiliate. To put all this in context, all of these achievements were before Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier by breaking into the professional baseball in 1947. But the Rangers' experience did not deter Herb Carnegie. In 1949, he signed with the Quebec Aces, and in four seasons there, he was a league champion, a scoring leader, and mentored future Hall of Famer, Jean Bolivar. Carnegie retired from playing in 1954 after a season with the Owen Sounds Mercuries. But for me, and so many other people, who discover Herb Carnegie's story. It's his contribution after his playing days that is most impressive. The year after his retirement, Carnegie founded the Future Aces Hockey School, an initiative so far ahead of his time, promoting inclusivity and equality and introducing the creed of good attitude, cooperation, example, and sportsmanship for all children of all ages and all races. The creed continues today, a decade after Herb Carnegie's passing, with the Herb Carnegie Future Aces Foundation and the Carnegie Initiative. I was honored to be, become a board member in 2019. It was at these board meetings and hearing his daughter tell stories of her father's experiences that I grew more indebted and impressed with this great gentleman. He took a very negative experience and instead of giving way to bitterness, he was futuristic and so forward thinking, offering a solution guided by his examples, 
so that kids like myself and so many others might not experience what he endured. For that, he has my greatest respect. And for that, he is so deserving of this honor this evening. I, I could go on, but I'm pleased to introduce Herb Carnegie's daughter, Bernice, and his son, Dale, who are here on, his beha on behalf of their father. Thank you. Well, I'm a little shorter than most. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It is my privilege for my brother and I to represent the Carnegie family this evening. Uh, sadly, our father is not here to enjoy this moment. But even so, this truly is a celebration that goes beyond family to the many thousands of followers and fans whose lives our father touched. I'd just like my family to stand up so you can see them. They're here. Please stand up. <laughs> yeah. They've come from all across Canada and North America to be here. And if you are here because of Herb Carnegie, please stand up. Thank you for coming out to support us. There are many elements that led up to this amazing honour and we thank all of you that helped us get here, especially the Hockey Hall of Fame Selection Committee for considering and understanding the significance of our father's contributions to the sport of hockey and to society. So who is this man, Herbert Carnegie? He was affectionately known in some hockey circles as swivel hips. <laughs> Just plain Herbie. <laughs> and, um, you know, he was part of the historical black line known as Les Noix. Thousands of articles magazines, videos, tapes, books, and documentaries have captured various stages of his life. He took the skills he learned from hockey and transposed them into his off-life, off-ice skills. He was an entrepreneur, a trailblazer that kept stepping outside the box. In addition to his talent in hockey, he, was, he excelled in golf. You may not though know this, but he won more than 24 amateur golf championships and two national titles. <laughs> he founded the first registered hockey school in Canada that included character development as part of his training. 
Before there were whiteboards for instruction, he invented a magnetic instructional hockey board used by NHL teams. He authored the Lifestyle Values Guideline, the Future Aces Creed, that became a movement in hundreds of schools throughout Ontario. My dad and I used to speak to 20,000 students a year for more than two decades. He founded a charity that influenced the lives of countless of stu students and awarded almost a million dollars in scholarships to kids who were giving back to their communities. Our father was thorough at keeping records, and I have hundreds of hours of tapes from interviews that span decades of his life. It was a gift to all of us that he wrote his thoughts in his autobiography, A Fly in a Pail of Milk, The Herb Carnegie Story. I got to re-release that book on his 100th birthday and got to write part two, lessons passed on from father to daughter. And I learned so many lessons from standing on my father's shoulder. Dale would like to share some of his own personal conversations that he had with our father. Thank you. Thank you, Bernice. While reviewing his manuscript with him, I would discuss the in-depth highs and the lows of his life. It was then that I finally realized that I had actually endured what, what he actually endured through his career. Adversity defined his character. It made him the man he rose to. Determination, tenacity, quitting was never an option. He loved that game. He looked at me and looked in my direction because he was blind at the time. And he made this statement, Dale, if I had known the outcome in advance of my career, I would not have changed one minute. <laughs> he added, I was good at my craft. I knew the joy I gave crowds, their appreciation for my skills and the feeling and their feeling I will always cherish. He was the right man at the right time to be the leader so that others could have the opportunity to follow their goals and their dreams. That was the man I knew too and work with for 30 years in schools all over Ontario. He was a man of integrity, led by example, and was an activist for human rights. The community and country he loved so much reached back to reward him with the Order of Canada, an honorary doctor of laws degree, and he became a real-life caricature in Spider-Man comics. Even a street, a school, and an arena carry his name. And so, after having been inducted into 13 other halls of fame, here we are. This is the one that will see six decades of Herb Carnegie's contributions recorded into history. 
we have come full circle. Our father started with, a ho with hockey, and now he and his memory can rest in peace. Rest in peace in his rightful place among the other great contributors of the sport, like our wonderful selection of inductees today. And we've had a wonderful weekend with you all and want to thank you for helping to make our family feel so welcome. But I know my father is calling out to all of us to honor the sport he so loved by continuing to do it justice and like the new organization named after him, the Carnegie Initiative, we are responsible for making the sport better. We are responsible for ending sexism, gender bias, racism, and homophobia. We are responsible for making all areas of our lives more accepting and inclusive. This was my father's life work. This is what I learned from him. This is why I'm grateful every day that I get up and I go to sleep, knowing that he gave me part of his vision and that we can share that with others. So ladies and gentlemen, we the Carnegie family proudly accept this honor and recognition on behalf of our beloved family patriarch, Herb Carnegie.